Hey friends, it's Inga. Hope you're doing well today. I am here to bring you a little bit of paper flower joy with this beautiful crepe paper peony. I'm going to show you how to create this flower. We're going to go over it step by step. Uh, today I'm going to show you all the aspects of the flower and then later I'm going to have a part two that goes over the back of the flower, the leaves, and making some additional foliage so you can make an entire peony bouquet. This flower is so much fun to make and is a perfect project for beginner to intermediate or advanced alike. We're going to go over several cutting and shaping techniques and we're going to use a little bit of pan pastel to add a touch of color to the petals. Isn't it just so pretty? So let's get started. I'm going to start by going over the materials and then we will dive right in and start building this flower. All right, so let's take a look at the materials we're gonna use to create this peony. So in today's video, I'm just focusing on the flower. So I'm just gonna go over what we'll be using for that. So I have here several different German crepe papers that we'll be using. So let's start by looking at the very center. So I've got this little piece of coral doublet. That's for the little carpal tips right here. You just need a little bit. Uh, for the green part of the carpels, I'm using this German Extra Fine Crepe in light green. I think the color is called Fern. Uh, you can get this from Leah Griffith. For the stamen, I'm using two different papers. I'm using a white doublet and a yellow doublet. And for the petals, I've got this peach and white doublet. So if you're wondering where to get all of these papers, I have all of that information linked on my Patreon page. Um, this tutorial is open to the public, so it's free. You'll be able to access this information right there on my Patreon page. The link is in the description. Just click on it, it'll take you right to that page and you can check it out. So some of the other materials that we'll be using to make the flower, I've got a little pan pastel to color the petals, and this is pearlescent red. I have a few different wires to create the stem and center. So this is an 18 gauge wire. It's covered with brown paper to make it thicker. Uh, you can purchase it like this. If you can't find this type of wire, any old uh, type of 18 gauge wire would do. This is a 24 gauge wire. So I'll be using that to form the base of two of the carpels We'll also be using it in the leaves, but we're not making the leaves in this video today. Other than that, I've got my tacky glue, I've got scissors, I've got wire snips, and a blender brush for my pan pastel. So I think we're ready to start building this peony. All right, so the very first thing we're gonna do is work on these carpels in the center. So I have my stem wire here. I've cut it down to, this is about nine inches. Um, so your 18 gauge wire should be about nine inches long. I've also cut two smaller pieces of my 24 gauge wire, and those are each about two inches long. So I want to prepare the very top of this stem a little bit. I wanna remove just a, a little bit of this paper so that I can shape my carpal here at the end. So I'm just sort of unraveling it a little bit and I'm gonna cut some of this paper off. It doesn't have to be totally gone. It's just removing some of it. This is maybe about an inch or so um, taken off from the top of my wire. So that's ready. I've got three little pieces cut out for the top of my carpal. Uh, you know, it's just, a tiny little rectangle with a rounded top edge. You really don't have to have these be a specific dimension. You just need to make a little bit of pink that's gonna show at the top of this carpal. But if you do want a template for this shape and for all of these other uh, flower parts, I do have a downloadable template available on my Patreon page for this flower. So check out the link below um, you can go to my Patreon page, get a free template uh, and um, resources, all that good stuff. So anyways, back to the carpal. So I've got my three little carpal tops. 
I've got nine strips of paper here. This is my light green extra fine crepe. Uh, each strip is eight inches long and about three eighths inch tall. Or if you're working in centimeters, that's about 20 centimeters long and one centimeter tall. So I've got, I'm gonna want three of these strips for each carpal, so I've got nine total. Let's just, let's just start working on one carpal. So I'm gonna start off with the top of my main stem wire here on this section that I removed the paper. I'm just gonna take one of these little pink bits here, get some tacky glue on the bottom portion, something like that. And then I'm just gonna stick the end of that wire right there in the glue and just sort of fold the edges over a little bit. It may or may not enclose the wire fully, that's okay, don't worry about it. Just getting that stuck on the end. Now we're gonna start building the carpal shape. So I'm gonna take my three strips here. I'm just gonna get one glued up to start. So you can put a line of glue, you can put dots, whatever works for you. You want to cover the span of the entire strip with a little glue. I'm gonna start building the carpal shape now. And I'm gonna fold this over to really enclose all that wire. Make sure you get the tip of your wire enclosed with this paper. I'm just sort of folding it over. I'm not really rolling it, I'm kind of folding it and pinching it down. And I'm gonna do that, move down just a little bit so that my carpal, the green portion, is gonna be about three quarters of an inch or about two centimeters, something like that. It doesn't have to be exact. And now that I have this started, I'm going to slowly start winding this crepe. I'm gonna focus more layers here at the bottom to make it a little wider at the bottom. So I'm gonna kind of stay there for a minute, keep wrapping, and then go back up, then go back down. You can see that it's starting to create a shape that's a little more wide at the bottom, a little more narrow at the top. I'm gonna keep that going using two more strips of crepe to build up the size of this carpal. All right, that looks great. I'm just gonna get a little extra glue here to get that end really sealed down. All right. You might wanna kinda roll it around in your fingers just to make sure all those little edges are stuck down. So that looks great. That's one carpal done, and I'm gonna follow that same procedure for the other two it's a little different just because you're starting with a smaller wire, but once you get it going, it's gonna be built the same way. So I'm just getting this little pink paper glued on and folding those corners over a little bit so that it wraps around the wire. And then I'm gonna take my greens paper strips and do the same thing. So remember, you want to really go over the top edge of that wire, just like that. And then I want to establish the starting shape for my carpal. So remember, I'm just kind of folding it over. I want this green part to be about three quarter of an inch or about two centimeters. And remember, it doesn't have to be exact. Now that I have this started, I'm gonna go ahead and start building that shape. Remembering that I wanna make it a little bit wider 
at the bottom. And you can see that it's starting to take shape. I'm gonna go ahead with two more strips and build up that thickness, just like I did with this one. And now each of your carpels might look just a little bit different. That's not a problem at all. Strive to make them approximately the same size and you'll be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this one up, make my second carpel, and then we'll put them all together. All right, so all three carpels are now done. I've also trimmed the pink bit down just a little bit to a point where I like it. You can see that my carpel, carpels are all just a little bit different and that is totally cool, no problem. They're similar enough to where it looks like they're uh, from the same plant, so I'm, I'm good with that. So this middle one, I'm gonna take the wire and just kind of bend it over a little bit to the side I'm gonna be attaching all of these together in a little bundle. You could either use floral tape or a little scrap of crepe paper with some glue on it. Uh, that's probably what I'm gonna do. Let's see. I'm just using a little bit of my green paper that I'll be using for my leaves. But honestly, it really doesn't matter what color you use to do this because um, it's gonna get covered up anyways. So, I'm just going to kind of hold these together. I'll, I'll put two together first. It's just going to be easier to get them attached. Get two together. Get the next one in there. And wrap them up all snugly. Just like that. And eventually we'll be covering the entire stem. So I know these are sticking out right now, these wires, but that's okay. So, the carpals, carpals are now done. This is the very center of my peony. Next, we're gonna work on these stamen right here. All right, we are ready to start making some stamen. Now, I'm making two sets of stamen here because I love it when there's just this thick, lush center. Uh, you don't have to do two sets, though, for each flower. If you wanna just do one, that's totally fine. So, uh, the method for this You'll see that these stamen have uh, white paper on the bottom, yellow paper on the top. The top is a little bit thicker than the white part in the bottom. I'm going to show you a really simple trick for achieving that. So I have here some white and yellow crepe. Now the white crepe, let's just measure this really quick. It is about six and a half inches long by one and three quarter inch tall. In centimeters, that's uh, 16 centimeters long, four centimeters tall. And the paper grain is running this direction. Okay, it's really important for these pieces that you get the paper grain running in the correct direction. So that's the white. For the yellow, all right, notice that the paper grain here is running this long direction. That's really important, okay? Here it's going up uh, this short direction. Here it's going the long direction. And again, this is indicated on the template. So if you would like the template, visit the link in the description below. Go into my Patreon page. You can get the template right there. This piece, the yellow piece, uh, it is about seven eighths inch wide or uh, a, that's a 22 millimeters, <laughs> 2.2 centimeters. Um, and then for this dimension, we've got uh, about six and a half. So it should be the same as, as this length here. Uh, centimeters, that is about 16 centimeters. Uh, thanks for bearing with me as I measure these pieces. All right, so I'm gonna start off just by making one stamen strip. I've got my white paper here, my yellow. I've got them matched up so that they match the lengths. So we've got the paper grain running two different directions here. That's what we want. I'm gonna start by just folding this 
yellow crepe in half. I'm gonna make a crease there to kind of mark that halfway point. Now I'm gonna glue it onto this paper strip. I wanna make sure that I get a nice even bead of glue all along the bottom edge here. I really want that to be stuck onto the paper really well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just sort of fill in with some glue. Don't worry if you don't have every single little bit of paper covered by glue. You just want there to be a reasonable amount on there. You want it to stick together pretty well. Now on this side, I'm gonna go along this top edge here and get a nice bead of glue going there. And maybe I'll just put a few little dots here in the middle. I'm not worried too much about covering every little bit. So you can see I've got tacky glue. Again, a nice solid line on the bottom and on the top edge, and then filling in a little bit of glue in the middle. I'm gonna take my white paper and line it up so that it's overlapping that yellow by about an eighth of an inch, or that's probably about three millimeters or so. So get that in there. I'm gonna fold my yellow over just like that. Get it stuck down. It's okay if your paper doesn't match up exactly at the edges. We can always trim that off in just a few minutes. All right, now that this is glued down, I'm actually gonna fold this yellow over one more time. And depending on how you folded it first, you might end up folding a little bit of that white paper in the middle as well. Maybe, maybe not. Either way is fine. I'm gonna go ahead and just fold it so that it matches that first layer of yellow paper. Open it back up, get some more glue on here. Remembering that on the very edge, I wanna get a really nice seal, so making sure that I've got good glue coverage. All right, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and press this down, get it glued up, and I do wanna make sure that everything is tacking down nicely. We want it to all hold together as we cut it. So I'm pressing it, pressing it with my fingers, and I'm just gonna let it rest for a couple of minutes. Now, I definitely wanna cut through this before the glue dries. It's gonna be so much easier. If this glue is completely dry and I wanna cut my fringes, it's doable, but it's a lot more difficult to get the scissor blades through all of those layers. So I'm just gonna give this a couple of minutes to kind of soak into the paper and then we'll start fringing. All right, I wanna start fringing this into my stamen. Before I do that though, I'm just gonna mark here on the bottom. Um, I'm gonna fold over a little bit of this paper to help guide me as I make my fringe cuts. So I'm just folding this over the edge of my ruler a little bit. Now you can see there's a little fold line here that's gonna be my guide. So this is about a quarter of an inch or about six millimeters, give or take, doesn't have to be exact. Uh, I'm gonna start with just evening out these edges. All right, now I've got a nice uh, clean starting point. I'm just gonna start making little fringe cuts they are about a sixteenth of an inch, about 1.5 millimeters. And I'm just cutting all the way up to my fold line. I'm gonna go all the way down this strip 
and fringe the whole thing. Some of you might be able to cut much faster. I like to go kind of slow. I find it to be kind of a zen moment to do all this fringing and just take my time with it. But you do you. If you like to do it fast, no reason why you can't. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this fringe strip. I'm gonna make a second strip exactly the same way and then I'll be ready to put them onto my flower center. All right, my stamen are now ready to put onto the center. So you'll remember we gave that little fold here um, to the very bottom. I'm gonna make sure that I've got the fold kind of going backward like this in order to put my glue on there. So check it out. It's kind of folding back. I'm gonna be putting glue right here, all along that bottom edge, in order to wrap it around my stem. So I've got that oriented the way I want. I'm gonna go ahead and put glue all along the bottom here, right on that little folded part. And I'm gonna get that situated with that fold right snugged up there underneath the carpels. And I'm gonna go ahead and start wrapping that around. Now, especially when you're just getting it started, go slow. Keep that little fold that you made in the stamen strip really snugged up there against the bottom of the carpel and keep your paper at the same level. So you don't want it to creep down as you're winding it on. You want it to all be at the same height. So just take your time, wind it on around, and pretty soon you're gonna have a center made of all these beautiful lush stamen. I'm also, I'm pulling the edge of this paper just a little bit as I go around, because I want to make sure that is wrapping on there nice and tight. Don't pull it really hard. This paper stretches, which is great, but you don't really need to stretch it out a ton as you're pulling for this part. All right, I'm gonna go through, before I add my second layer here, I'm just gonna make sure, take a look and see if I have any that are twisted together or out of place. Sometimes they get a little tangled as you're wrapping and that's normal. I'm just gonna make sure that they're all looking good before I move on to the next one. All right, I'm ready. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one on the exact same way as the first layer. All right, here we go. All the stamen are now on my center. It looks really pretty and full. Um, I'm gonna just kind of curve these in a little bit. I'm using this scriber's tool. You could use like the end of a paintbrush or a pencil or a bamboo skewer works great. I'm just sort of curving these inward a little bit, giving them a little bit more of a, a natural curve in towards the center of the flower. And I can also kind of just press down like this, and give them a really nice organic looking shape so they don't look quite as stiff. It looks a little more natural, not like they've just been cut from paper. So there we go, looking great. Here's our center so far. So the next thing we're gonna do is create some petals. All right, it's time to work on some petals. Now remember, there's a template that you can grab from my Patreon page, the link is below. Um, you can either use the template to cut it out or you can just sort of freehand it. It's a pretty basic shape, right? It's like, you know, upside down teardrop. So I've got a piece of my peach and white doublet. This is about two inches wide 
and about 4.25 inches tall. And the paper grain is running this direction. And in centimeters, this is about 6.5 centimeters and 11 centimeters tall. So if you wanna freehand this, uh, just take your rectangle, you can fold it in half the long way. Just gently fold it, you don't need to make a crease. And then go ahead and start here at the bottom and just cut out a nice big teardrop shape that just kisses the edge, something like that. And boom, you've got a petal shape. Or take the template. This way you could stack a bunch of them um, underneath, cut out a whole bunch at once. That's what I like to do. And then just cut around this. All right, so I've got 10 petals here and I'm gonna go ahead and add some edge details on. Oh, one thing I do want to mention, notice how some of them have little folds where uh, the paper was folded and that's really not a problem because once we're done shaping the, the petals, that fold's going to disappear. I know some of them are kind of faded right here too and that's also not a problem. We're going to add pastel and this fading, um, it's, it's all eventually going to fade anyways, but uh, it gives a really nice really pretty variation in the color. So in my opinion, I think it looks a little more natural when there's some fading and variation. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do some edge details on my petals. This is optional. And I like to just freehand it. Um, I kind of start here at, at one edge and I slowly close my scissors as I move my petal back and forth with this hand here. And now I'm just gonna start again, do that same thing. I'm just sort of closing the blade as I move the paper. This takes a little bit of practice, but it's a really fun, easy way to create some edge detail. And remember that each one of your petals can be different. So maybe you only want to do a few petals like this with some detail and do the rest smooth. You can totally do that. It's up to you. I love doing this detail work though. So I'm going to go ahead and make all of my petals have a little edge detail. And sometimes I like to cut way down and almost make a little slit in the petal especially some of those older outer petals on the flower, they start to fall apart a little bit. And these little slits make a really nice realistic touch. So I'm gonna go ahead, add some edge detail to my petals. Then we'll do some coloring and shaping. All right, I've got a pile of petals, 10 petals. I've got my pearlescent red pan pastel. I'm going to grab a petal, get some pastel on my brush, start at the bottom, and create a really pretty pink gradation here using the pastel. So this particular color goes on a little bit light, so I'm just using multiple applications here. Um, depending on what color you're using, it, you might not need as much pan pastel. So I like to go up about two thirds of the petal and add this really pretty pink pearlescent color. This will, the, the paper will fade, the pastel won't. So here is the same paper. I made this peony a while ago and it's faded, but it's still got some really nice pan pastel coloring in the middle there. Uh, this one I actually used orange pan pastel instead, so it's a little bit more of a golden peach color. This one's a little bit more of a pinky peach color. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of pan pastel on all of my petals just like that. All right, pan pastel on all of my petals. It looks beautiful. Now I want to do a little shaping. So I'm going to start here in the middle and put my thumbs in the middle. I've got my fingers on the back of my petal here. I'm going to pull my thumbs apart and stretch the paper. So this is called cupping. 
cupping the paper, making a cupped petal. So you can see now that I've stretched that middle area, the petal has this beautiful rounded cup shape. It's kind of scooped here on the inner surface. So this, uh, this is a really nice basic petal shape. You can go in and sort of stretch and cup some of these little individual lobes of the petal if you want. You don't have to. Totally up to you. I like to sort of uh, stretch each one just a little bit differently so that my flower has, has a really varied and organic look to it. So this petal is now shaped. We're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and shape the rest of my petals. When I'm all done, you'll see that each of them are going to look just a little bit different, and I love that. All right. I've got a bunch of beautiful petals here ready to put on my flower. So I'm starting with five. I'm gonna do two layers of five here for my petals. I am going to put some tacky glue here on the bottom half inch or so. Is that half inch? It might be a little bit more. Let's check it out. Yeah, it's more like three quarters of an inch or about two centimeters here on the bottom of my petal. And I'm going to place this. Most of that glue is gonna be right under the stamen on this little uh, vertical part here. So I'll press that on. The little point of my petal here should be a little bit under the, um, under the white paper and should be able to touch the stem. So something like this. And I really wanna press that on onto this white paper right here to give it a really nice sturdy base. And you can see right now it's really hugging the stamen. Once all of the petals are on, we can kind of open it up a little bit more. But to start, I'm gonna put all of my petals on just like this, lined up with that white paper, the tip of the petal touching the stem. I'm going to put five petals evenly dispersed all around the center. I'm gonna start with that and then I'm gonna add my second layer of five. All right, so here's my first layer of five. You can see that the petals all overlap each other just a little bit. This one barely, barely overlaps, but that's okay. I've actually got another layer of petals. So for my next layer, I'm gonna choose these spots right here in between my petals, and I'm going to add uh, another layer of petals that overlaps the first. So just as an example, let's find the spot here where these two petals overlap just a little bit. I'm gonna line up the center of my second layer petal right there so that it, it overlaps those two. And then I would put one here, 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 and here. And then I would have 10 petals in my peony all together. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of my petals on and we'll see what it looks like. All right, so I've got 10 petals on my peony now. I want to let them dry for a little bit. I'm actually going to kind of hang it upside down like this. Let this glue dry for about 15 minutes or so. Then if I want to open the flower up a little bit, I can do that. Um, after the glue dries a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and just let this dry for a few minutes and then we will take a look at the finished flower. All right, here's the peony, looking really beautiful. So the glue is pretty much dry. I'm just gonna go ahead and, and open the petals up a little bit because I, I like those really open peonies. How lovely. 
So you can see how that pan pastel just gives a really nice pink glow in the very center of the flower. And this will fade a little bit over time, but it's still gonna be beautiful regardless. So that's it for today, focusing on the flower right now. Um, the next part two of this tutorial, will be finishing up the back, finishing up the stem, adding some leaves, and then also learning how to make some filler foliage for a little peony bouquet. So stay tuned for that. I'm really excited to share the rest of this project with you. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to like and subscribe and also check out my website, check out my Patreon page. I've got tons of tutorials just waiting for you to dive in. If you like working with crepe paper, I've got a lot of projects you would enjoy. So I'll be back with part two of this tutorial. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you again soon.